Welcome dear students to this class on art and literary aesthetics. Today we will discuss the painting Guernica by Pablo Picasso. Pablo Picasso as you all know was the most dominant and influential artist of the first half of the 20th century. He is associated with the movement called Cubism. He also invented collage and made major contributions to symbolism as well as surrealism. So you'll be looking at uh, all these movements in art and literature, cubism, symbolism, surrealism. Please um, listen to the class on the overview of art movements. That's very important. Picasso saw so himself above all. As a painter he's a sculptor as well that being said and done uh, his uh, sculpture was greatly influential and he also uh, explored areas as diverse as printmaking and ceramics as well according to him art is a lie art is a lie that makes us realize the truth you know uh, typical of simplest and other surrealist artists, he believed that a realistic depiction or representation of things is not possible, that is not true. So art is a lie that actually makes us realize the truth. He was born in 1881 and died in the year 1973. He was a very uh, famous uh, painter, sculptor. He had a very charismatic uh, personality. He has many relationships with women, not only filtered into his art, but also have directed the course of his work as well. You know, he led a bohemian style, and you know, we can call him a bohemian modern artist. You know, uh, his body of, uh, when we look into the body of uh, his uh, work, we can uh, make a classification of his works into blue period, rose or pink period and the period of cubism. So uh, in between you find a period, a brief period called African period where he used uh, a mask and other ritualistic, you know, ritualistic mask uh, in particular. During the blue period, he uh, worked he painted mostly tragic paintings. Most of the paintings are of beggars and rich families. The prominent feature is the elongation of the figures. You know, this is the uh, painting, Old Guitarist, uh, belonging to this period. The next period is called the Pink Period or Rose Period. And this uh, period shows more compositional strength and figures have more uh, solidity as well as charm and simplicity as well the last one is the you know in between yes uh, there is this african period where he used uh, the representation of human in carving and rituals ritual mask the last one is cubism period of cubism uh, which was developed cubism this movement which was developed along with george bark using monochrome brownish and neutral colors this uh, movement, Cubism, uh, developed in the aftermath of Pablo Picasso's shocking painting that came out in the year 1907, La Demoiselle Avigna, that is, you know, the painting of five uh, nude uh, prostitutes. Drawing upon uh, Paul Zizin's emphasis on the underlying architecture of form, these artists, Picasso and Braque, they used multiple vantage points to fracture images into geometric forms. So this is the main characteristic feature of cubism. The images are fractured into geometric forms rather than modeled uh, forms in an illusionistic space. Figures were depicted as dynamic arrangements of volumes and planes where background and foreground merged. The movement was one of the most groundbreaking of the early 20th century as it challenged Renaissance depictions of space 
leading almost directly to experiments with non-representation of many different artists. Artists working in the Cubist style went on to incorporate elements of collage and popular culture into their paintings and to experiment with sculpture. The key ideas of this movement are, we can look at that, the key ideas of this movement. The first and the foremost thing is that these artists of Cubist Cubic, cubist movement abandoned perspective. You know, that was popular during the Renaissance period. You know, these artists abandoned perspective which had been used to depict space since the Renaissance. And they also turned away from the realistic modeling of figures. That is the second thing. You know, they turned away from the realistic modeling, realistic representation of figures. They explored open form, piercing figures and objects by letting the space flow through them, blending background into foreground and showing objects from various angles. Some historians have argued that these innovations represent a response to the changing experience of space, movement and time in the modern world. The first phase of this movement is called analytic cubism. And in the second phase of cubism, that is synthetic cubism, the practitioners and the artists explored the use of non-art materials as abstract signs. Their use of newspaper would lead later historians argue that instead of being concerned above all with form, the artists were also acutely aware of current events, particularly the First World War. This movement, Cubism, paid way for non-representational art by putting new emphasis on the unity between a depicted scene and the surface of the canvas. Coming to this uh, famous uh, picture painting by Picasso, Guernica, you know, uh, let's see the background of this uh, image, of this uh, painting. You know, though it may look very chaotic and difficult to decipher at first, Guernica is actually a moving piece of art that tells a powerful story about the Spanish Civil War. The two most striking features of the painting, when you first see it, are, you know, its size and second, it's the color. Guernica is almost a full mural stretching over 25 and a half feet long and standing over 11 and a half feet high. You know, it's as if, you know, uh, just imagine the painting, the, uh, a painting with the size of the wall of your classroom. You know, it's as big as that. This age is depiction of the suffering caused by war because of its ability to tower over you and engulf your whole field of vision. Its unique use of monochromatic scale specifically that of a black and white, also helped to further convey its anti-war message. Therefore, you know, we need to dive into the symbolism behind the painting. Uh, though Picasso says, you know, he doesn't give any meaning to the bull and the horse and the other uh, images of this painting, but nevertheless, the painting is symbolic in nature. Coming to the Civil War, you know, um, a lot of people died. You know, a total of 29 planes carrying 20, 250 kilo of bombs were dropped and about 1,700 people died. So, you know, it was very chaotic, that event. And um, Picasso was resorting to this uh, style of uh, cubism to portray this uh, trauma of war. Let's take, the, take a close look at the painting. You know, we can divide the painting into different parts. The first, the bull, woman and the child. You know, there's this bull. Can you see this bull there? The picture, the geometric uh, painting of a bull. Far left, we can see this bull depicted with a dark body and white head. The expression it wears is one of shock, most likely caused by the horrors that surround him. Picasso himself had said that the animal was placed there to further signify brutality 
and darkness. You know, it's disproportionate. You know, there is this uh, one uh, tooth comes off. You know, it's it, it projects. And then the virgin and child. Underneath the image of the bull sits a woman clutching a dead child, her head facing the sky in an anguished cry, her eyes in the shape of tears. This image was meant to resemble the classic Catholic image of Virgin and the Child, uh, with tainted by war. So again, the trauma of death, loss, you know, all this. You know, the image of that woman, um, it shows the trauma of war, the aftermath of the sufferings caused by the war. After that, the central pyramid. The center is occupied by a horse falling in agony as it had just been run through by a spear and a dead uh, horse, a dead war horse. Situated in the center of the painting, we find a horse appearing as though it is about to collapse and is in some way wounded. We can only make out the horse's head with its open mouth open as it gazed sour at the horrors of war. The rest of its body is overlapped by other images which in turn form more images such as a human skull. So again this is a remnant of war. The fallen warrior showing defeat and death. The stigma sign on the hand symbolizes pain experienced by the innocent people. Uh, during this uh, war, working away further down still, you know, we see this dead soldier on the ground. The soldier, however, does not have a complete body. You know, we can't see the complete body, but rather a series of disjointed parts strewn about the floor. We can see his head and both arms. In one arm, he carries a broken sword and the other, he carries a flower. We'll come back to others images of flower. So this is one is the fallen warrior one. This is the next uh, uh, next warrior where you find the sword and the flower. Broken sword again showing defeat. Then flower rising from the hand symbolizes that sir, there is still some home le no, hope uh, left. You know, we'll come to that uh, later. So the falling woman. So that is the next uh, image of a woman, the image of a falling uh, woman. So down now to the bottom right corner, we see this woman with an injured leg. She's bleeding with, uh, from knee and is trying to stop bleeding with her hand. That's also that also shows the terror of war, the fleeing woman trying to run away from uh, the battlefield, you can see, from the suffering. The woman with the lamp, a woman floating in from the outside, holding the candle of hope and challenging the light of the bulb. So there is this bulb, you know, where, uh, from where this uh, light comes. Maybe that symbolizes violence that uh, engulfs us, the entire scene. And uh, as if uh, challenging that uh, light from the bulb, this woman of hope carries a candle. Then the human skull and the bull head, the two hidden images uh, there, images of the skull and the skull and the image, the skull and the bull head. The bull maybe symbolize it symbolizes pain, maybe. The sign of the Illuminati, there is another reading of this uh, painting, the sign of Illuminati is visible when the hidden lines are emphasized. Also the bulb which represents old seeing eye, also you know it's about the, that also shares the same concept of the Illuminati. You know you can just go and read about these Illuminati and you know, those uh, things. So one reading is that you know this is actually a sign of this uh, painting itself is um, something related to this the possible exit entries and exit points of the uh, painting 
the tension in the fingers you know you can watch this you know how they clutch how they hold their hands you know how they how uh, the ha the depiction of hands the attention uh, to these details should be made relaxed hands can be seen of the fleeing woman cause she sends there is some still there is still some hope hands clenched of the woman holding her child you know that is of uh, tension of of uh, trauma of uh, of pain anguish these are the sounds from the painting though it's not heard you know it's as it's as uh, good as hearing those uh, sounds you know you feel that the painting is screaming aloud a lot of sound and noise come out of it recreating the whole scenario of the event of a spanish civil war the sounds coming from the figures enhancing the agony and pain the bull the horse uh, the cry the neigh of the horse a dying dying horse the woman screaming uh, no we find the anguish the cry the painful cry and scream of from the painting cubism and basic geometric shapes you know these are all geometric shapes used the images are fragmented into geometric shapes the concept of cubism is used in this painting creating all the figures and objects from basic shapes creating shapes with different tones of gray you know it's monochromatic in nature so apart from these uh, pictures there is this uh, white poppy the first uh, was the flower in the dead soldier's hand and you know, we have uh, have told you that and it was an odd choice to place it there as soldiers are not uh, known for carrying buckets to the battle but only sword on one hand you see the broken sword the simple little flower sends a clear message of peace and hope to come though it is not discernible the flower in the soldier's hand does, resembles a white poppy flower ever since the end of the world war second poppies have traditionally symbolized peace and the end and remembrance of war then you can see a dove the second was a small bird between the bull and the horse between the bull and the horse you can see a small bird there it's not very clear it's just a flash of white though the catholic church the holy spirit is often represented as a white dove this leads many to believe that the bird may be the symbol of holy spirit beginning to break past the darkness of the events around it once again to usher in peace for the near future and then the lamp we have the oil lamp if studied very carefully you will see that the source of what is lighting the scene is not the electric light lamp bulb above but the oil lamp immediately beside it this small flame is strong enough to shed light upon the entire scene and if it is in fact the spirit of the spanish republic that awaits it then it is a source of hope for those who are those who are presented in the scene itself the innocent people who are dying this will also explain why the injured woman below looks up longingly towards the lamp of life light so this is uh, an analysis of uh, guernica so i want all of you to look closely at this picture this painting and make an analysis of uh, guernica and what you discern from the picture from the painting so because you know uh, interpretation is always subjective though i have told you all these things when you look at the picture this painting very closely you find many uh, different may, many other messages as well you know you can find some other meanings in the pictures in the images uh, depicted so please make sure that you will make a thorough appreciation of this painting and post it in the google